Hi guys, I'm Pixie, welcome to my channel and today I'm gonna turn this 17 inch Monster Hydra Colora into Hatterene, character of Pokemon Universe. Honestly, I never was into Pokemons, but when I received this commission I wasn't able to resist. The design of this Pokemon is so luscious. With my customer we decided to go wild and create this doll and told Draculaura, which honestly was so exciting for me, but also was really challenging. Problems occurred from very beginning, because removing head of this doll even after hitting the neck with hot water was just not enough. Efforts were excessive, but actually everything turned out for good. Fortunately, I still had undamaged dowel inside her neck, therefore the fixing was easy. Second problem was the neck pack stuck inside the head, so I had to cut it out from there. The rest of the time doll behave obediently, and it allowed me to create the most outstanding doll so far. The amount of materials, new techniques and methods I practiced on this doll for sure synthesized marvelous custom doll. And oh how I wish you know how hard it was to create this doll in winter when the daylight is a luxury. It literally was about 2-3 hours window each day for a whole month. All because I was too stubborn and didn't want to use artificial lights to film specifically this doll. Still, it was an experiment as well. So now let's go to the materials. Since Hatterene is character of fictional universe, I decided she should be in some way magical, because her nature in this world presupposes her to be that way. Looking on Hatterene, I saw a really feminine, elegant and tender creature, so fabric choices I based on her appearance and her power's background. She is from group of psychic fairies, humanoid, almost alien-like. Her abilities are, I'd say, more like on supportive side, like heal, defense and weaken the opponent. So in my vision she's supposed to be whimsical and gracile. I picked some iridescent fabrics with geometric patterns, few meshes, textured silk, thin cotton, all of pink, blue and white colors. Design of Hatterene implies simplicity, but instead of making her minimal, I will make all I possibly could but to add extra chic. I'm starting with making her a bodysuit, patterns made by paper tape body wrapping technique. Basically you just wrap doll with paper tape as it said from the name. There are many pieces so I numbered them. I prepared all patterns in advance. I cut them out and edges of each piece processed with thin coat of glue, sewing whole thing by the hands as usual, and beginning from the main middle section. Starting from here I will add sides. Trim the sticking parts. To keep process organized I'm working with all recurring pieces as well. For seams flattening I'm using hair iron. Some pieces still would need some adjustment and trimming during process. Wax pencil would help and wouldn't leave any marks after all. When middle part corrected, time to add lateral sides. Also a bit of trimming required. This one is lateral back piece. Sew it up, check for all layers to be aligned well and only then make a stitch. Seems fine. And trim, trim, trim. Don't forget to press all seams by the work is going. Some reshaping again. And adding another segment which I also trim. Leg openings I will decorate with some laces. To the future back pieces I'm adding lining. Major piece of work is done, so only keep going forth. Fold lining inside and iron it carefully. Later eyelets will sit here. Adding lining to the middle section. 
it would add more dimension to the silhouette. Ok, looks nice. A bit rumpled, but with heat I will fix it easily. Splendid! Let's jump next. To the bust cups we go. Look almost like rose petals. Make marks with something light colored and almost invisible. For me, hard grade graphite pencil worked well. Line the ends of your marks and make a solid seams. This trick would help to create rounded shape. Actually, iron plays main role in patterns shaping, so it's better to learn your tool. When all four cups are ready, those can be connected. But before I add laces to the top edge. Must confess, it is my first time making such big cups for a doll, so they turn out a bit flatter than I expected. Next time, I think I should try to shape it with using something round to achieve more curviness. Flat iron worked fine, but it just merged everything in flat shape. Cups are ready to be added to the body. But before I'm making few stitches in center to avoid sliding those to the sides. And now only connecting two pieces together. Some trimming again. Okay, going fully flat is fine for this piece, okay? So now I'm preparing lining to be assembled with the rest of bodies by hemming all edges. Then I just stitch it to the bodies. Since I'm working with lining, it is time to connect back pieces together. When it is done, let's connect the leg openings. Sorry, for me it was high risk of screwing this up area, so I skipped filming it. I even can't explain it with words how you do this. Twist it and just try to keep all hems inside. Ok, she did it! And now behold! The secret of spontaneous knots uncovered! If you mainly hand stitching like I do, sometimes this bastard can occur. But don't cut it, try to untangle it. Put the tip of the needle inside the loop, ok? Then pull one of the threads underneath. Try both and find the one, you will feel it. If you pull it gently but strong enough, you would release the loop without cutting it off. Stitching the back opening. There is not much for this one, but I will do it anyway. Great piece for a first time, I'd say. I like the dual color design and shiny pattern of it. So now I will add some details to it. Starting with eyelets for ties. With ruler and pencil I marked the places for eyelets. With specific perforating tool I make holes. So, holes are there. I still need some more practice on that, but I like how it turned out. Let's insert some eyelets. This process is extreme type 1 and requires hammer and brute force, but it's totally worth it. Under the bust I'm adding floral laces. Excess ornaments I'm just cutting off and with lighter melt sticking threads. Then just stitch it onto the bodysuit. At this point I am almost done with it, so let's try it on. So now I will add straps to shape bust right. 
Bust of the doll is modified with epoxy if you were interested. Straps I'm making with Atlas ribbons and jewelry rings. I also made them to color to suit the design. Those would be crossed on the chest of the doll and tied behind her neck. Corset ties bring so much to any piece of lingerie or a dress, but also it helps to adapt any clothes to a doll's figure. It is skirt time, and it is the biggest one I made so far. It wouldn't be a layered cake though, but more like a complement to Hetherin's original look with sprawling bottom line and slim hips. Literally, I hadn't enough of table space to cut many of her clothing pieces, so I did it on the floor. Her skirt is having two sides. Inner is iridescent mesh, and face is white mesh and pink silk, which I used for her bodysuit. To make skirt actually sprawling, I'm adding some inserts shaped like an arrows. Eventually, skirt will be looking like a flower when lace specific way. When right and left sides of skirt are ready, I'm merging them together. Maybe you already can see similarity with Lily or maybe mermaid fins. So this is the main idea of it. This doll plans as display one, so I want to make her gorgeous, no matter where are you will looking at her. This is face side of this skirt, and it reminds me of flower even more in that colors. Making few darts on the hip area to create bit of a shape. It would help to frame hips of the doll well. Placing line into the face skirt and stitching them to each other. Since this piece is so large, pins would help to avoid sliding. Each layer should be placed outside with hems. After stitching, I will just turn skirt out and seams would be trapped inside. Looks fabulous, in real life it's even better. Camera can't show this colorful flowing on the skirt in all its beauty, just believe me. Waistline I left open and trim excess fabric. Now I can turn skirt inside out and iron it to flatten. With laces I decorate petals of the skirt. Fold edges of the waistline inside the skirt. Iron it and fix it with stitches to finish. Sew up two buttons on each side. Those would hold skirt on the bodysuit. Cover seams with another strip of matching laces. On the back side of the skirt I want a bow, so I'm making one with same iridescent fabric which I used on bodysuit. Also bow will have too long to send in tails matching the skirt shape. Connecting those tails together and then with bow. Sew up bow to the skirt. And we're done here. I made many dolls heads in my life, but none of them was this big and this shape. I had to actually figure out how to make it stay still and do not fall with brims on the doll's face. So it has quite of a construction here. Starting with the top cone and ironing interfacing layer to it. To make plain blue cone more playful, I am placing strips of mesh on it. Those would help to create more dimension and marry head with the rest of outfit. With pins I keep those on place before start stitching. Unnecessary edges I trim with scissors. And go to the needle and thread. Crank same ironing step with the brim. Edges of this hat are craven for laces. As before, those are like glue for this outfit, will create the wholeness. Few tails for back of that hat as well. Looking on this, I think I shouldn't add them right now. 
Little jump in future to see how I decorated them though. If you want to see how I'm making those laces, check out Alice's little dress video to learn. Those became quite heavy and fancy with bits and everything, also reminds me of rabbit ears a bit. So back to the brims and connecting two parts together. Turning out and preparing for filling this cover with insides. Insides are thin foam layer and wireframe shaped in heart. Aluminum wire is not the most durable, so you can't fold it into extreme angles many times, or it will be broken. But it is really lightweight and still can be carefully bended without breakage. I'm making pair of loops on the ends of my carcass with jewelry pliers and drill some threads on the loops. So wire is inside the brim and now I can reshape it whatever I like. To finish the base of the head I'm sewing up back seam of the cone. Unlike brims, the top don't need any additional wire support. It is already sturdy enough. I left the opening on the end of the cone for arm later to be attached there. Hem edges with iron. Pink side of the head I covered with same iridescent fabric for skirt. Yay, now I can connect pointy top with brims. And just like that, time to decorate. With lace I'm making rim around the cone. Some elements of laces should be removed, so it wouldn't puff up. With scissors I'm touching up laces ornament. A completely different thing. With stripe of blue cotton I hit all edges and now I will add layer of ruffles to the head by just sewing it up onto the stripe. I like this pleated ruffle so much because it reminds me of mushrooms. Because of weight of the beads I'm making support seams to fix ruffles on place. Maybe you already noticed, but head actually enormous size even for 17 inch tall. It is all part of the plan. And I'm still not done with it. Adding some more blinks, like another bow and artificial flowers. I like the idea of adding roses to this doll, because in my opinion it is the most feminine flower you can find. And it suits my design perfectly. On one of the arts I saw this idea with roses all over the character. And I just couldn't resist, but took it for my doll as well. White bolero is another part of this outfit. I'm starting with body pieces connecting together on the back seam. Pressing it with heat and I got very strange detail. Two parts of one color I also sew up to each other. Press again and I got second strange detail. That shapeless something is actually first of the three parts of the sleeve, which I'm gathering into a puff. Pressing with iron again. Second part of the sleeve I'm attaching to the puff. Now it looks more like a sleeve, or not. Anyway, take the sleeve and sew up it to the arm socket. Great! Sleeve successfully installed. Same way I'm working on the collar piece and sewing it into the neck opening. On the left is to hem some edges, iron everything and close size of the bolero.
on the hemmed edges I'm adding, no, you get it, more laces. It is not a flower. Well, it is, but actually it is also a third part of the sleeve. It is cuff which should be sewn onto the assembled sleeve. With using some editing magic, now you see finished bolero. Little roses elements here as well. And small hook closure on front of it. This doll is kind of a big one in all its meanings, eh? Let's make some big shoes for her then. With iron I prepared soles and tips of her shoes. And with epoxy I also made noses. Excess fabric trim with scissors to avoid surplus volume underneath. Soles are simple cardboard pieces glued in few layers for more thickness. The key thing is to make everything lay without bubbles and wrinkles, so press those bitches well. Also a screwed up filming shoes part. But no worries, check out my nature doll video to see how shoes like that can be made. No time for telling you how I wore stupid and messed up record and stop buttons on my camera and filmed everything but not an actual process of making shoes. And here I'm painting the heels, hope it was really informative. You're welcome. And now process of creating the foam Iran thing begins. Hetherin has some kind of an arm sticking out of her head, and it described as one of essential weapons in her belongings. So it should be epic. And little mama's helper in working with foam is a shoe glue. I can't understand why people still keep using hot glue or other kinds of polymer glues to work with foams, but cosplayers already snitched the secret of caoutchouc aka rubber glues for Eva foams. And it works perfectly fine for foamy run as well. Yeah, it looks like a booger, but works much more better if you pressed it nicely and left at least for a day to do its magic. Can't lie, two thick layers of Eva would work just the same fine. But I had this foam run at my storage for eternity, so I just had to use it. As a core I used flat aluminum wire. At the moment it looks really raw, but oh boy, you can't even imagine how I was happy it actually worked. All edges of this thing easily can be sanded with tool like this one for nail art. I tried sandpaper, uh, don't even start guys. With those little dudes it would be thousands times faster. All these blooming colors I will cover with acrylic paint. But acrylic would be cracked if you bend a thin, so I will be using the painted with acrylic fabric covers. Not a biggie, I will crank the secret of painting foams eventually. For now just look at that cover. It is even better for me, because fabric is guaranteed wouldn't crack anywhere and it can be decorated like clothing. Adding white laces on the perimeter of the thing by simply gluing it. With another layer I cover another side of the thing, also by just gluing it. To make tips of the thing sharper and neater, I put metal cups on each one of them. One of the ends of the thing I embroidered with beads and length of the whole thing I provided with organza ribbon. So, on the one end of the thing I want four-fingered hand palm to sit. And there is no other way for me to get it but to make it. It should be very lightweight and I picked foam for kids crafting. Anyway, base of the hand I'm making with aluminum wire and foil. I was literally terrified, but kept going at that point. This idea sat too deep in my mind, so I had no way but to make it. With craft foam I will be growing mass of the hand to actually make her looking like an actual hand. As you can see, this palm literally is the size of my palm. First layer looks not pleasant at all, but it's just supposed to look like that. Second one a bit better, but still not there, too rough and bulky. Yay, so much better, we are done, thank you, bye! Lol, no, keep making out something cute from this monstrosity. Final layer is essential. This foam material has to be actually fully dried if you don't want to mess completed parts of your project. 
so I guess I spent a whole week on this palm, just sculpting, smoothing, drying it out and shaping it again. And remember, I said I only had 2-3 hours a day with nice light to film. This thing just had to turn out stunning. Thankfully, I guess it actually turned out stunning, just like I imagined. With some eyebrushing, I cooled down bright pink color and painted nails in one shot. Inner pocket of the palm I also covered with foam and let it dry for another day. There I would put one of the ends of the thin, so I will get full arm eventually. I already used this foam on my Ahirune May doll, so I can tell it is great by tricky material for dolls. With some fabric liner I paint random ornaments just to add some extras on the hand. I just think it would serve overall look in more magical way. Polishing everything with some ruffles, flowers and beads. Face up time! You know, at this point I was exhausted. This doll just drained all my creativity to the very end because she was so big and so detailed. And you know, I wanted her to drain me to the thread. I wanted to push myself to very borders of my skills, because this character just asked for it with all its essence. She was made on rare and expensive doll. She has beautiful articulated body which is amazingly interesting for photos and video filming for me as an artist. So I chose to give all myself for her. It was even more challenging because it is winter. In Eastern Europe winters are quite cold and days becoming really short. So at that season I have to use more artificial lights for filming and working. And I just wanted to keep same natural shadows from my window just like it is spring on all duration of this video, so you just can tell for actually how much time this doll took, even approximately. Why even bothering, you may ask? I'm sure you can tell that this doll was that much of a deal, but for me she actually is. Just like every other doll I'm putting on this channel. It is much easier to make single shot of your doll and put it into your social media. But there you only see the final result. There is too less of information you can get or feel that way. Even this video is limited, because I still left so much to tell about dolls and about this whole art area. So I made my shots and posted those on my socials, but it was never enough for me. At some point it just became boring, with no perspective to grow. Something had to change, and it changed little by little. I love making videos and I love sharing this journey with you. Frankly saying, I'm happy being here and showing you my art growth diary in motion. It is already a year since I put my first doll video on this channel, and I already can say how far I moved and how far still I have to move. So I'm grateful for your comments and support under my vids and for the love for my arts you're sharing with me. It is great motivation to keep going. In new year I want to keep making my dolls and filming them, making my skills better and became better myself. Later, learn and share this knowledge with others. So join my channel to see where it will lead us. You are very welcome to stay here. Also, I'm beyond the moon grateful to my customer who ordered this girl for her collection. I never had any Pokemon-inspired doll came under my hand, so Hatterin is the first one. And she was 100% match from first sight. I appealed to Hatterin deeply because of her actual nature of creature who loves silence who is so tender and peaceful but also seems like Pokemon with hidden mystical side. She is cute, she is interesting and I liked this Pokemon. Her creation process was so much fun and I loved design I got. At the end I actually already couldn't say that the size of this doll even mattered to me. It felt so natural and comfortable. Her face by my light hand I finished in one day and just then I assembled her in one piece looked at her and I lost my shit guys. She is awesome. I can tell all efforts was worth it. Stay with me guys and wait a bit to see a final result.
Also, I want to tell you thank you for staying here with me today. Please subscribe, leave a like and comment. Suggest any dolls you want to see next. I love reading all of your comments. Maybe the other day I will make your idea into a custom doll. In few moments you will see Hedrin. Hopefully you have learned something new today and had a nice chilling time with me. By now I'm saying you have a nice day guys. See you in the next videos. Bye! Yeah, you talking out. Mm, got a whole lot of words falling out, yeah, on your mouth. Ah, take your hold deep. Baby, go and show yourself Love